Listener, my nearest tour dates are Phoenix, Orlando, Tampa, Miami, West Palm Beach. If you didn't hear your city, I'm coming, I promise you. And if you don't listen to these notes very often, and you might, maybe you don't listen to every podcast, the best thing you could possibly do is go to ashleygavin.com slash tour dates. Sign up for either my email alert or my text alert. I'm not going to bother you. I don't share data. I'm a small independent company. I'm not selling your data, okay? It's me and Alex and sometimes Kate, all right? So go sign up. I'm only going to text you or email you once a year, unless you want to hear more, but just once a year so you know I'm in your city. This is really helpful for me, guys. Out of the kindness of your heart, please let me text you once a year. On this episode, we have Mac and Jemmy. You know her, you love her from her YouTube and her TikTok. She is so funny. I just, you guys recommended her and I just got to know her through doing this pod. I'm already a big fan. Um, She'll be back for sure. On this episode, she gets into uh, her first time having phone sex. It's a lot of fun. We also did a vlog together on my YouTube. I roasted her uh, her Tinder profile. It was really, really fun. I'm just going to also say this. I've been a little frantic, but I just want to say a lot of you have sent me some really nice messages, and I, I do read them, and you're really just very sweet. I'll be okay. Just busy. Just busy, busy, busy. I hope you guys are busy with good stuff or having a great, relaxing week. Lil Bottom, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while now, you you know I'm a huge fan of Helix mattresses. I'm obsessed with my Helix mattress. It's the best mattress I've ever owned, and that's why I'm so excited to let you know that that Helix has left the bedroom yet hung up its strap on to dry. I'm sorry. And they started making sofas. They just launched a new company called Allform, and they are already making the best sofas in the game. So what makes an Allform sofa really, really cool? Well, for starters, it's the easiest way you can customize a sofa using premium materials at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. It's true. I customized my sofa. I could pick out the material that I wanted. I could, like, figure out which side I wanted to have my chaise on. You can get a matching uh, armchair or a matching love seat. All form sofas are also delivered directly to your home with fast free shipping. Right now, if you buy a sofa from a traditional retailer, it might take months to arrive and you would need someone to come and set it up for you. All form only takes a few weeks and it's really easy to do. I'm not one of those handy gays and I set mine up in just a few minutes. And if buying a sofa online sounds scary, you want to try it out, you don't need to do that, actually. You get 100 days to decide whether or not you want to keep it. That's more than three months. And if you don't love it, they will come and pick it up for free and give you a full refund. To find your perfect sofa, check out allform.com slash gay sex. And right now, Allform is offering 20% off for all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash gay sex. Go get your sofa. Go put your bottom on that so far, you little bottom. I recently discovered phone sex. We started talking as friends. It was just one of those nights. We've had a lot of nights where we just don't sleep and stay up all night talking. And somehow at like 3 a.m., it kind of snowballed into that and the flirty didn't stop. And then we started talking about what we like in bed. And then it kind of became this thing where I was like, I want to do this to you. And like, I want to do this yeah. to you, blah, blah, blah. And like, it was really f- hot though. Like, yeah. Now I'm thinking about the first person that ever did phone sex. <laughs> Oh, it probably was. Can you hear me? I'm. C- <laughs> There's something in my teeth. Yeah, big, really big time. <laughs> That's a good friend right there. You don't want friends that don't tell you when you have something in your teeth. Wait, though. other side, other side. Oh, it's between the two middle ones. It moved. <laughs> Spinach. <laughs> you I made a it. scramble. Oh, uh, of course. Your go-to. It is my go-to, especially when I have a girl here, which I may have. So, <gasps> oh my yep. god, is I... that why it smells like Febreze in here? <laughs> I just assume the cats took a couple of. <laughs> <laughs> I just always have candles going. You telling me you got <laughs> Febreze? I have <laughs> flavored <laughs> Febreze. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> flavored are you eating it's, it it's actually but <laughs> it's called vubries and i do eat it I, i'm like a little kid with the markers like, they smell good i want to put them in my mouth no 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 well how's your day mac you you said you're in missouri what's going yeah. on it's kind of it might snow here in a little bit uh, which it was like 60 yesterday so 
that is like a trademark of my city is that like one day it'll be like 80 and then the next day it'll just like drop to 10 degrees and like I start think snowing. that's a trademark of uh, the world <laughs> in Climate 2022 uh, right. I, th- I that think too. that's just well, no 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 <laughs> we don't believe in that here we don't believe in that here so <laughs> that's just yeah. Missouri <laughs> that doesn't exist here yeah. but it's been, it's been a good day yeah I just left the gym and so I'm feeling I got that that exercise high feeling yes. pretty good right now the that's dwarfs. so great got the those dwarfs, dwarfs running <laughs> dwarfs <laughs> Yeah, man, <laughs> bro. I got the I got the sick dwarfs. I'm just high on dwarfs right now. Um. All right. Well, let me tell you got what that tonin running. <laughs> to- like when you're melatonin, like for sleep. I meant serotonin. No, serotonin. <laughs> you're right. There's a bunch of tonin. There's a lot of tonin. There's a lot of tonins. I'm a little okay. Let me tell you what I have going on. Yeah. I have lubed up my arm. I don't know if you can smell it. Ah, not with lube, not with... You c- just said you had a curl here and then asked <laughs> me to smell not your fingers, but your entire arm. <laughs> I'm going to... Is I'm, it icy hot? It's it's like... It's okay, CBD. then that's the Febreze type it's thing CBD. I'm smelling. It's CBD. Yeah, it's like CBD. Yeah, so yeah, here's yeah. the thing. I'm old and I'm getting tested for <laughs> some genetic joint issues Lately, I've been making a lot of TikToks and stuff like that. So it's kind of been carpal tunnel-y. But there's also been a lot of fingering. And the two cannot coexist. No. You have to choose between pussy and TikTok. I have to choose between pussy and TikTok. (laughs) Which is homophobia. (laughs) I'm afraid that I'm dead and living in Ashley's personal hell. (laughs) That you have to choose between pussy and social media. I think I have to take the rest of the week off to rest my arm. I'm not even kidding. It hurts so bad. From pussy or from TikTok? <sighs> I think both. So it was really, both. It, it was last night. I was working really hard. Arm was just flaring up. And I was like, you should stop working. But I couldn't because I have fucking problems. <laughs> and then I had the girl come over and I was like, well, I can't not finger her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's homophobic you right. you're so right you can't not finger her i wait so what does carpal tunnel feel like it's pain on this side of my wrist i think it's technically not carpal tunnel i think it's like a different nerve mm. but it and then it feels like a little tingling in your fingers dude i think i've got that you got it you're fingering <laughs> and making content there's no lesbian content creators are some of the most tortured soul we have to endure so much we are marginalized (laughs) by our sexuality and by the content that we make i was not ready to get diagnosed today (laughs) god there's professional softball players who have to have a second job as cpa and you're like me i have it the worst (laughs) (laughs) but i do You think you think put you think that no that I have put, an incredible life I'm what's so pussy, happy carp carp carpal carp, pussy <laughs> tunnel carpal <laughs> carp, pussy that's too long pussy tunnel syndrome <laughs> PTSD <laughs> yes I have PTSD <laughs> pussy tunnel syndrome disorder. <laughs> that's what no that's what's so bad about it though because. I started getting all this attention from women after I started making TikToks. Nice. This is the other thing I do that gives me carpal tunnel. (laughs) It's just doing this all the time. I'm just like very excited. Absolutely. But then I can't hook up with any women because of the carpal tunnel from the TikToks. Oh my God. It cancels out. So like all the attention is null. Do you, you have need, trouble? Okay, this is where the selfie stick comes in. You don't have to hold your hand at the weird angle. You hold the selfie stick and then you, you shove it you inside, shove it the girl. inside of her. Yeah. <laughs> is, is this uh, sponsored a, by a selfie stick? It yes. is with a dildo attachment. <laughs> I was gonna say, sharper image is doing some incredible stuff these days. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what a great episode we're doing already <laughs> hello i am ashley gavin welcome to our podcast if you're here because you're a big fan of mac and you're never coming back fuck you fuck you <laughs> but thank you for supporting mac stay here you little dumb piece of shit we have stay. other two yeah you like the podcast right mac i love the podcast stay hang out absolutely yeah. and uh i'm ashley gavin I'm a cis gay white woman. She, her pronouns. We're going to go round table today. We're each going to tell a gay sex story. Yeah. And then as always, <laughs> you're laughing already. I've got nothing prepared. <laughs> My, as always, I've got nothing prepared. As always, <laughs> I have done little to no work of preparation for this podcast. 
cancel coach to keep me from getting canceled. The fat in the chat. Give me a sport, Mac. What you you look sporty? What'd you play? Lacrosse. Up? Lacrosse. Oh. We've never done lacrosse. Yeah. The fat in the chat. This is awful. I can't say this. <laughs> say one. it. Say I it. can't. Please. <sighs> no, I can't. It's too mean. <laughs> it's mean. It feels mean to lacrosse players or to me. To you specifically. <laughs> Fuck lacrosse players. What's a, what's the name of the? What do you call the different? What, what? Give me some names of lacrosse specific lacrosse things. Oh, I don't know. I never played. I just like always wanted to. <laughs> it's just you yeah. flat out lied to me, Mac. You flat out lied. <laughs> uh, how about how about basketball instead? That's you gay. played basketball. I did play basketball. There's center. There's power forward. Uh, a uh, personal foul. A person. Well, a personal foul <laughs> feels like what I've done to you by showing you my lubed up arm. That felt like a personal foul right there. Yeah. Whatever. I don't have one. It's the. It, it's Kate Sis. Hey, everybody. It's me, oh Kate Sis, the cancel God. coach, the fat in the chat. I am a white bisexual lesbian. Dyke. Any pronouns? My gender of the week, as submitted by the listeners, and this might be one of my favorite ones, is when you're at the Red Sox game. And it's seven specifically and the Red Sox? Yeah, yeah. And they play Sweet Caroline and specifically the part of the song that goes bah, bah, bah. Yeah, that's you. And I was oh. like, yeah, wow, that really resonates. You are with me. a brass section of a human being. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's and yeah, you can find me at the Kate Sis on the Twitter Kate and Sis. Instagram. Yeah, go. Please, guys. I ran into a fan at a show. She <laughs> didn't come to Sunday school. She was like, what the fuck are you doing here? I was like, why aren't you at Sunday school? <laughs> and she was like, I know I should come. And then I like open up her Instagram. She's not following oh, me. No. She's like, I'm a huge fan. Guys, it really <laughs> helps us. Yeah. That's... It helps oh. to follow people because this is our livelihood. This is how we make ad money. This is how we get brand deals. Speaking of Sunday school, right. I put my latest Sunday school set on YouTube. So you can check oh, it out on my channel. Cool. Yes. Go check out Kate's YouTube channel. Okay. And now... Incredible YouTuber, huge on TikTok, huge on Instagram, huge on YouTube. Oh, that was fun. Mac, I don't know how to, is it making, what is your username so that I can okay, say it smoothly? So it's, this confuses a lot of people and I didn't realize until like, I started kind of blowing up a little bit and then I realized, but it's Mac Injumi. My last name is Injumi. Injumi, cause it looks like making Emmy. Yeah, it does. A lot yeah. of people think my name is Emmy, which, I think that's cute, so that's okay, but... Mac and Jimmy! I did it right. Lots of research going on here. <laughs> Absolutely. You're <laughs> just getting it straight from the source. Do you mind introducing yourself to the listeners who might not know Absolutely. who you are? Absolutely. My name is Mac. I'm a cis white woman. Um, lesbian. She, her pronouns, probably. Still okay. kind of figuring that out. Well, Sweet. that's great, because Kate is confused. <laughs> And it looks like you might be confused, and <laughs> I am very sure of myself. <laughs> You're just falling apart physically. I'm falling apart physically, <laughs> but otherwise doing very well. Good. Yeah. So wait, what, <laughs> where did you, like, how old are you, 21? I'm 22. Okay, so when are you leaving Missouri? That's a great question. Um, probably. Come on. No, one, no one's goal is, no queer person's goal is to stay in Missouri. Why not? No. You can make community anywhere. See, it's interesting here because like <laughs> the city that I live in, it's called Springfield. It's like the third biggest city here, but we have a college here. So it's very split. Like you'd think it would be super hard conservative here, but it's actually pretty split down the middle just because it is a college town. So my experience here hasn't been like growing up, my family was very religious. So I kind of just assumed everything around me was, but then when I kind of went off on my own, even staying in this town, I was like, huh, like people here, are always so bad. It's definitely, I feel like, one of the better places to be at because it hasn't been it hasn't been overwhelmingly conservative here. It is very religious though. Okay, cool. Well, that's good. And your parents are like very. Are they have they come around? Uh, my mom, my dad is kind. Of, my dad is weird. Um, we had like a weird time when I came out, and then he now like at the end of my last relationship, he was like, "You should bring your girlfriend to dinner." And at that time, I was like, "Well, we're probably gonna break up." Did he say it in We're that way? Break that he <laughs> and he was like, "Whew, 
Um, but did he say it in that way that was very intentionally? He said, well, I think actually he said it to my mom and then my mom said it to me. Like he didn't actually say it He couldn't even face you with the gayness. He couldn't face me with it, no. So it was bad, but. I had a girlfriend like that once where her dad, like she came out to him, they had one conversation about it and then he never spoke to her directly about me ever again. It was awful. That is awful. Yeah, and now she's dating my doppelganger and the whole family loves her. So (laughs) joke's on me, I guess. That's (laughs) fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kate, I have to say I love your laugh. You are so like giggly and it's everyone so- love loves Kate's laugh. <laughs> everyone glad. is constantly writing in about how Kate's laugh is the best laugh they've ever heard. Thank you. It's yeah, so thank you listeners. That's yeah. really nice. What do you guys think of my shouty voice? <laughs> They love it. They do love They're it. They're always actually. doing the squirt squirt emoji when they talk about your voice. They do, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> the squirt I think... squirt squirt emoji. I look, I, I'm gonna be humble. Men about are like, this. it sounds like a jackhammer, and lesbians are like, squirt, squirt. <laughs> Men are like, you are worse than Hillary Clinton, and lesbians are like, <laughs> It's true. I, I'm going to be humble about this because I think I have a cartoon character voice. Like I have a ridiculous voice. I sit down like Alex was here the other day when I was making the Helix mattress ad and I sat down and I was like, what's up, Bottom Nation? And I, I, I just can imagine this like cartoon with a little, little backwards hat, like just so fucking annoying. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I'm going to tell a gay sex story, and then Max going to tell one, and then Kate's going to round us out. Yeah. Isn't it nice to have the soundboard back? It's nice to have it back. We did it, Joe. Alex came in yesterday. (laughs) We spent six hours working on this goddamn setup, and we accomplished a couple things. (laughs) Guys, I need need some girl advice from you guys. So, (laughs) um, Mac, your face is so animated, I think, from YouTube. I just have to, for the people listening at home. It's from TikTok. Like, my eyebrows, they will move, and you'll be like, what the fuck? And they're just going to keep doing it. I have no control anymore. I feel like even that one strand of your, like, side bang, I don't know if that's the preferred pronoun for what that hair is you but. look like hunter you look like hunter from boy meets world oh thank you so much for saying that i am so glad that you said that because the girl that i'm talking to right now is obsessed with him and people always comment that and it gives me like major bonus points so thank you so much for okay what's out. this girl's name oh i can't okay well she's listening she's obsessed with you Matt she, looks like oh, hunter she, yeah Thank you so much for that. No problem. Um, I Hunter was like a boy that I wanted to be in girl form mm. when I was a kid. Mm. Did you watch Boy Meets World? No, it was one of those. Uh, that's Topanga, right? Yeah. I've, I feel like I saw like a couple episodes here and there. Of that course was... you like Topanga. No, I didn't like Topanga. That's just like the only memorable name from it. And oh, okay. <laughs> I just, we, we weren't really allowed to watch TV. So we would like often sneak in that moment, like before my mom got home like some tv and that wasn't one of our good go-tos yeah oh no i wasn't really allowed to watch tv either uh so i'm like right there with you kate there was like i feel like i I would see like i would catch old gilmore girls and you know the mom the the lorelei was really doing something for me (laughs) also wait i don't know if you listen to this episode mac but i had sex with a mom a couple weeks ago what Um, and yes, so cool, right? Wait, can we talk about that? I guess no. I'll just go back and listen. That's it's fine. the episode with Gus. I should have worn. I have a. I have a. I heart hot moms T-shirt. I should have worn that. We'll wait. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people wrote in and were like, some people wrote in. A co- there were like three categories. Yeah. And then there was one insightful message. They were okay. like, moms have to be much older, like your thought. Well, anyone can be a mom. The no, no, MILF. No, the MILF. The MILF. The MILF. We were debating whether me. or not it, yeah, this woman was a MILF because she was 28. Yeah. So, yes, you didn't think she fulfilled the M- MILF fantasy because of For her you. age. For you. Because you were well, older. Some than people, her. so the young moms were writing in and were like, thank you, thank you. I'm 32. I'm a mom. I'm a MILF. I want to be called a MILF. <laughs> so to those people, that's really offensive, Kate. <laughs> no, I specified that it was for me. Clearly, I literally said, I literally said the words, It ha- they have to be older you- than you because then it's like a teacher or your friend's mom, which means that Ooh, something yeah. bad happened in my brain when I, <laughs> when I was 13. <laughs> a lot of bad things happened to you when you were 13, Kate. No, to be clear, nothing actually happened to me. I just mean something wired my brain when it would have been taboo. Right. 
So the so, tabooness is what an, makes it a fantasy. Right. To Another me. person was like, you have to make the distinction between moms and cougars. It's like right squares and rectangles. Cougars, like, that's so different to me. Cougar is almost like you're not a mom. <laughs> you are like a fucking virtuoso <laughs> when it comes to I'm older a women. Prodigy. Uh, <laughs> you are like I've written four volumes. <laughs> 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 They're Diane, Susan, Karen, and Sharon. And we love them all. Ah, oh, page 69 in Diane. Mwah. Wait, I would, uh, a side note, I would love to be an author who just like wrote like pretty serious novels, but on page 69 of all my novels, the character 69. <laughs> They Yo, fell into that some, familiar numeric swirl. That's some JK <laughs> Rowling shit right there. JK Rowling's gonna get on Twitter and be like, turn to page 69 of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. They are inside each other's chambers of secrets. Oh my god. Mac, we're sorry. We we haven't recorded no. a lot of in-person episodes, so we're like off the rails. Yeah. No, this is incredible. This is like my dream come true. My and I don't even want to kiss your ass right now, but literally when I was talking to my sister this morning. Let me finish, Kate. When I was talking to my sister let, this let morning. Let her finish. Let her finish. Let I her finish. Could, please let me finish. It's been a while. Um when I was talking to my sister this morning. <laughs> I was talking to my sister this morning. She was talking to me about, we were literally both like, I was like, I'm so excited to hear their voices because oh. like you were talking about your cartoon voice, but it's so fun. Like it's so, Thank whenever you. she shows me your TikToks, you know, the one of the, uh, where you're like telling that woman in the audience that she's gay. Like, kind of, like that one. <laughs> I said somewhat, somewhat gay, just for the record. <laughs> Listen, that's my sister though. Like, <laughs> You were talking my sister in the audience, <laughs> minus the fact that that woman had had sex with other women. But that's literally, that's literally my sister. Is your sister queer? We don't know. <laughs> we're we're also waiting for the genetic testing to come back. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it's been, can she say hi to you guys? Yeah, yeah. Come here. Don't be shy. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's up? Hi. Oh, yeah, you're gay, bro. <laughs> Yo, you, you are fucking gay. I don't. Hi, how are you? You are gay. Is it sweater vest? How how What's is she? Going on? How is she gayer than the gay YouTuber? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out my sexuality. That's fair. That's fair. Everyone's on their own timeline at their love, own pace. Yeah, and I, I love how just, Kate's like. That's okay. Like, yeah. take your time. And Ashley's like, you're, you're gay. gay. I texted Kate yesterday. You are a man. Just <laughs> flat out. I'm not fucking around. Okay. I, and I'm not trying to be judgmental. It's your journey. Use your labels. But if I can assist you, if I can just yank you out of the closet because you need to be yanked. <sighs> I will do that. I have a question about sex. This podcast is kind of about sex, right? <laughs> Let's talk about sex. I'm so nervous. I all of a sudden, I'm like, maybe I'm a MILF. I'm about to have the birds and the bees conversation <laughs> with my clearly queer child. <laughs> so how do you have sex if you're gay? No, I'm kidding. That's not my question. Um, so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, this is so funny. <laughs> Also, we need to start the episode. Yes, so, yes, yes, we do. Right, right, okay. <laughs> okay, here. Bye. Thank, thanks for letting me <laughs> Great to meet you. What's your name? Her name's Mattia. We're not twins. We're 18 months apart. So it's okay. basically just like, as soon as my mom was ready to go again, they, they don't believe in birth control <laughs> either. It's it's like the second climate change here. It's so. so it's so funny that your parents are like like you live in this town. Your parents are like this, and <laughs> they have two very clearly queer children. Um, <laughs> they're yeah, their kids like we Uno reversed. We did not really go with what they wanted, but that's okay because they're growing and learning too from it. So it's great. Oh, yeah, that's so that's nice. Sweet. That's such a nice point of view. It works out. Okay, so let me tell you what happened to me at Sunday school because I think we're like 35 minutes into this. So I I was at Sunday school this week. I saw a group of four. All of them seemed like people that I would hang out with. Yeah. And they were all like sitting together and um, drinking and like just having a good time after the show. So I went over. I think they like kind of called me over and I sat with them and I was getting to know them. And one of them was talking about this long distance relationship that she was in and like one of them, I was like very, this is an attractive group of, you know, 
babes for babes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? When the babes walk in, you're like, that's the group of babes. It's that's a quad the babes. of babes. Huh? It's a qu- b- broad quad. <laughs> broad quad. <laughs> so the broad quad walks in. Broad quad. <laughs> Far quad? Yeah. Um, that's where my mind went as well. <laughs> so this broad quad w- walks in, and, and there's this one really cute girl, and I was like, that they were all cute, but I was like, I'm attracted to this girl. And I say to the friend who sort of, I think listens to the podcast or whatever. This girl doesn't know who I am, which is phenomenal. I love that this girl <laughs> does not know who I am. So the other one who does know who I am, I'm like, oh, do you think like she? And then that girl says to me, oh, maybe. But I also, oh, to me. Yeah. And I was moment. like, that was that sucks because the girl that said that to me, she was very attractive. Yeah. Like if, she, if I had not known the friend, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But because she listened to the podcast or whatever. Yeah. And I had already expressed interest in the friend. It felt weird yeah. to like backtrack. Yes. You know, I think it, so what did you just say? Well, you I just, just like, forged oh, nice. ahead and I was, I, 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 I <laughs> You're so I brave. I, thank you. It was a really uncomfortable situation. Did I mention I have carpal tunnel from fingering? <laughs> Things are really hard right now. And you had to finger all four of the broad squad. All four of them. Oh. With, um, no, but and, and then I was just sort of like, oh, I'm sorry. And she was like, no, 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 it's OK. And I was like, but I'll get you laid, bro. And then I made this Instagram story being like, <laughs> who wants to date this woman? Yeah. And I think she got some slide ins. I don't know. But anyway, sh- she's beautiful, honestly uh shout out i don't know if she wants that but we can put it in later but uh then the friend and i get like a moment and i'm like you know would it be okay if i texted you and she was like oh yeah and and i couldn't tell how interested she was and i will also say my game is not good well she might have known that her friend has a crush on you yes because her friend might have been like let's go see this comedian that i really like i want a banger what do you think did the friend know mac I feel like if they were like good friends, then she knew. Yeah. Yeah. Because like that's something that you ask your friend for help with. Like that's that's a sister moment for me. Right. Like that's a come back to the hotel room and it's clean flowers everywhere moment. I probably just should have stopped at this point. But I, you know, I don't know. It was just like a weird I was thrown. And yeah, yeah. I ended up getting her number. And at the end of it, I was like, couldn't tell what was going on. And I was like, wanted to be sure that she was okay with it. So I was like, uh, you know are you interested? Like, is this something? And she was like, (laughs) she was very blunt. She was like, yeah, you're hot. And I was like, okay, (laughs) cool. And I was like, well, what are you looking for? And she was like something more casual. I was like, great, me too. So I then texted her and we have the text. So between those conversations, she could have recapped with her friend and her friend could have been like, yeah, whatever. I shot my shot. Go for it. Yeah. And then I was texting with the friend on Instagram who was like, cough, cough, follow my friend back on Instagram. So she was oh. like helping her friend. So I followed the friend on Instagram. I know there's so many friends here. We need to give them names. Um, What do we call the podcast fan, Mac? The podcast? Oh, Wait, that's cool. That I already said her name and that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. What about the girl that I'm texting with? Oh, she's tall, Ooh. man. She's like oh. six feet tall. Bernadette Bernadette perfect Bernadette so Bernadette I texted her and I was like hey I'm like really sorry my game was so off I was like my game was nowhere to be found but I would like love to go and hang out with you like do something and she was like yes me too like I had a you know whatever so then I was like the next day I texted again and I was like so when are you like typically free and it's been 48 hours uh and I have not heard back so I'm getting a lot of mixed messages here yeah what do I do? I, okay, personally, if it was me, wait, 48 hours is a long time. Long yeah. time. What time of night did you text? Or was yeah. it during the, or the morning? Like what time of I day did I you text? I think I texted evening time about 48 hours ago. It'll be 48 hours in a few hours. Mm. Do I send a so follow? So she wasn't like, it wasn't during sleeping hours? No. Huh. If it was me, my ego would not let me send a follow up. I'll be honest. <laughs> it just wouldn't happen. It just wouldn't happen. <laughs> I have to say, my ego is a part of this, unfortunately. <laughs> it always is. I, I barely know her. I can't be hurt by but this. But it's not, it's not, I feel like your ego response isn't, I'm not going to send a follow-up text. Your ego response is, I need her to get back to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. 
I kind of want to be I like, drop it. do you, drop it. do you want me to send you my TikTok? Like, what do you <laughs> want me to? Don't, don't ask. Just send her a viral TikTok. Just send her a viral just TikTok. Like, yeah, literally. <laughs> uh, it's not that. I just like, I don't know. And I feel like the other side of it is I kind of want to be like, hey, I know it was like a, maybe a weird situation. Maybe not this no, phrasing. I don't think you need to. I think her other just... friends are big fans of the pod too so i yeah. i do kind of want to say look if this is like strange i totally understand i want you guys to like keep coming to shows i want you guys to keep enjoying the pod i am not offended if like this isn't for you that because that's true like i don't want to lose yeah. anybody because you, you could also just keep communicating with the max the really grace, thinking about it this no girl. this is just like very interesting like the way that you like actively will get with your fans can I call them fans? Is that weird? Or like you're one of those people that like doesn't want to call them fans. You know what I okay, mean? Okay. Okay. That was a very blunt way of putting it, Mac. And <laughs> I need to push back a little bit. I do not actively get with fans. <laughs> okay. this, this girl was not a fan of my work. She did not know who I was until that but evening. But her friends. But her this friends. Is like by association, <laughs> she's at least like 25% there <laughs> what do you want what do you want me to do internet what do you want me to no. do <laughs> the lesbian community is small the lesbian <laughs> community is small i am trying my best to be ethical and moral and thoughtful okay <laughs> ashley's like ashley's like i'm so famous that there are no lesbians left for me to fuck <laughs> I fucked them all. That's how I got I car tunneled. tunneled my way into <laughs> okay, six carpal degrees tunnel. of separation Let's with do, every dyke on earth. Let's do no, some quick I, math. And, uh, 350 <laughs> million Americans. 10% of them are gay. That's 35 million. Divide that by two. 18 million gay women or uh, gay queer. You've got to eliminate the children. Too. Is that gay. the math? Okay. I have 20 million likes on my TikTok. <laughs> you tell me how what percentage of the lesbians of America have seen me. A massive, <laughs> massive percentage. Look, I'm not trying to be an ass, but at a certain point, I have to have sex. I think... <laughs> Okay, I think <gasps> I hate myself. You have, I hate myself. The so reality much. is, is that there has been a there has been some wavering on the issue of quote unquote to quote Mac actively getting fans. <laughs> there has been a that small one. Okay. amount of wavering from a strict line to a little bit of a less strict line. I do think and back to this that point my line though where. I have a, the line is strict. I would say my line is way, my bar is way higher. Yes. Well, than I, and I would almost say any other what comedian. complicates this scenario between friends, which is something that's already complicated. Mm -hmm. Like that's just like the, the root of so many comedic scenes in TV and movies is that there's two guys and two girls and they like the wrong one or they yes. both like the same one. Like it's, yes. it's a famous thing. Yes. What makes it suck is that one of them is basically off boundaries to you because of your rules because she's an avid listener and the other one is very much available to you if she wishes to be because she is not an <laughs> avid listener yeah so it's this bizarre i just think you should walk away <laughs> <laughs> i don't think they're gonna it stop is getting coming kind of to the messy. shows yeah it's well that i'd like to at least send a message to just be like hey no hard feelings that's what i want to do because i never want anyone to feel weird I, I don't like I don't actually feel but maybe bad about she the doesn't rejection. feel weird I don't know she might not feel weird and then I'll find out <laughs> I obviously Mac what do you think I should do I clearly have a way that I'm gonna this go. is <laughs> I think you should go with your gut you sound like you're like convinced to just send it and be like hey no hard feelings no. Kate's saying no her gut is hard she's no. gonna send everyone should... <laughs> involved in the broad squad a four paragraph hey no okay. worries if not please come to a show i'll comp your tickets oh like no can we do like a character <laughs> limit on the response like <laughs> just yes. tweet you're allowed to tweet, tweet at all <laughs> yeah like 150 <laughs> characters like <laughs> Not too much, not too little. Listen, like, find that sweet spot. Kate, I'm not sending paragraphs to all four of them. I would only send the I'm text to teasing. Bernadette. I, I would say, hey, Bernadette, listen, if you want to get a drink, cool. <laughs> if you don't, I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable. I know it was like a weird situation, <laughs> but I was so glad that you guys made it to the show and you're welcome. That's perfect. Like if Bernadette doesn't respond to that, she's just a dick. Like, wow. That's I okay. Bernadette, <laughs> I like you. I think you're fucking cool. <laughs> Matt, do you have the impression that I actively get with fans? No, that's not. Okay. That's just, listen, 
<laughs> You've like talked in your podcast before about like getting with people at shows. And I'm just too scared to like, I would be too scared to hook up with somebody that like follows me on TikTok. Just for the fear of them like fully exposing the entire experience yes, to the internet. Yes, of course, of course. And I, I have that fear too. Has that happened to you? No, uh, for, and and I think the way that I but also it wouldn't matter that much because you're I'm already, already exposing doing it. myself. <laughs> the thing is, Matt, right. that I have no privacy left. Well, and you talk to the women. I do. Yeah. So the women. <laughs> I'm. I'm not. If you want me to say, listener, if you're listening to this and you're like, this is this is weird. I completely agree with you. <laughs> if you can find a way to more carefully talk about this shit. Please DM me and give me some suggestions because it's very freeing though. Like you're just completely open. I am. I'm completely that's, open. That's nice. Like to an extent, that's nice. I don't, I'm the internet's still debating if I'm, I posted a TikTok talking about being a switch and the comment section just said, no, you have bottom energy. And like, why did that offend me? I don't know why, but it did. Well, it's, like, not, the, it's the way that they said it. Yeah, it's not nice to be told what you are when you've said one thing, you know, and yeah. it's just a universal part of the human experience. Yeah. Right. I guess, I, I just to be clear, if anyone's listening, I really am very thoughtful about, you know, my dating life. And it is more challenging than it used to be. Yeah. And I hope you guys can have some empathy for a situation that is totally bizarre new to me and that not a lot of people experience i do i think i would just react differently but that's just because we're different people i don't think i would follow up with the person who didn't for respond sure. to me for but sure. i think i would text the person who was a listener and who had expressed their interest i don't want to bring her into it more than i've already have you don't have to i'm not telling you you should i'm just Kate, saying stop telling me to text <laughs> this girl <laughs> Okay, we need to move on. Okay. Am I going to have to cut this entire thing? No, I don't know why you're so worried about because it. Because I have anxiety about my dating life and I worry what people think of me. Anyway, <laughs> that's my guy sex from this week. Listener, don't forget to support the Patreon, patreon.com slash WHGS. That's how we pay Alex. He is a full-time employee of the podcast. We could not pay him on ads alone. That's how we pay Kate. And of course, me also. This is full-time work. So please consider going and donating. And in return for those donations, you get bonus episodes. You get comped tickets when I'm in your city. Um, you get extended, unfiltered, uncut episodes, um, weekly access to my Zoom stream of my show in New York, and lots of other stuff. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Listener, do not miss me when I'm in your city. I know you miss my TikToks and my Instagram posts, and sometimes you skip podcast episodes. I'm only in town once a year, so let me text you once a year when I'm in town. Or I can email you ashleygavin.com. There's going to be 25 cities on this tour. Don't miss your city. Listener, I know you're a little freak. I know at some point you humped a pillow on your Helix mattress. I certainly have. I love my Helix mattress, and I love all the humping that I do on it. And you'll probably be pleased to know that Helix, in addition to making incredible mattresses, truly the best mattress that I've ever owned, they are leaving the bedroom and they are making sofas. So a whole new piece of furniture for you to hump. They just launched a new company called Allform, and they are already making the best sofas in the game. And I know it. I have one. I love my Allform sofa. What makes an Allform sofa the fucking best? You can pick your materials and your fabric. They have all different types of stuff to customize to your life. Maybe you've got a little kitty cat. You want something scratch resistant. They've got that. Maybe uh, maybe you want something spill resistant because you're a MILF. You got a little baby gay, a literal baby gay crawling around the house. No matter what type of sofa you want, all forms got it for you. You can customize it and make it match all the other furniture in your house. They have love seats. They have armchairs. They have these sofas. They have the sofas, the sectionals, the big guys, if you're not living in New York City. And all all form sofas are delivered directly to your home with fast, free shipping. Right now, if you buy a sofa from a traditional retailer, it might take months to arrive. And you would need someone to come and assemble it in your home for you. All form just takes a few weeks, and it only takes a few minutes to set up, even I could do it, and I am an idiot. And if getting a new sofa without trying it in a store sounds risky to you, you actually get 100 days to try it, and if you don't like it, you, they'll take it right back for you for free. They'll give you a full refund. You don't need to worry. There's literally a forever warranty. Forever, you guys, that's what I said, and all form wants to do their part and offers exclusive discounts for teachers, students, military, and first responders. 
All right, I don't know what else to tell you. It's a great deal to find your perfect sofa. Go check out allform.com slash gay sex. And right now, Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash gay sex. That's allform.com slash gay sex. Get that 20% off. You use your sofa for whatever weird shit you want to do, listener. Listener, if you're anything like me, you've been on a dating app, you're sad, you swipe to the bottom, and then you bought the most expensive subscription possible so that you could find all the lesbians in your area. And then you totally forgot about it. And look at that. Months later, you spent hundreds of bucks on a subscription that you didn't use. Didn't you wish that there was something out there to protect you from your lonely, lonely heart? Well, there is, listener, Truebill. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. That is a lot of money. And because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions, including that dating app one, in just one Tap and your true bill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so that you don't have to. I've actually been a true bill user from way, way back in the day. I've been using it before I even started this podcast. I love it. It saved me a lot of money. I'm one of 2 million Truebill users, and Truebill has helped save them over $100 million. Like Matthew B., who says, in a matter of seconds, I saved $660 for the year on my DirecTV bill, saved $120 for the year on my SiriusXM bill, and saved $840 a year on my car insurance Don't fall for subscription scams, listeners. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash Ashley. Go right now, Truebill.com slash Ashley. It could save you thousands of dollars a year. Truebill.com slash Ashley. Mac, did you have gay sex this week? So no, but I recently discovered phone sex. You hadn't heard of it before? I don't know. Like, I just hadn't. You're like very recently. Can you hold for a moment? Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I just uh, give me another like 35 minutes. I'll be off in a second. I'll be off literally in a second. <laughs> so you definitely, you definitely met a nice girl in LA that you're still talking to. Is basically. Oh what yeah. You're saying. Um, she's way too good for me. She's way too hot for me. She's way too everything for me. But I'm gonna hang on to her for as long as I. Why would you? Can. Why would you say that? Listen. Uh, if if you knew her, you would agree. She, like my sister, my entire family, I'll just say it. She came here to visit, uh, like, at the end of oh, December. Oh, this is, like, and, like, serious. It's something, for sure. How long have you um, been talking? Probably, like, we started talking, like, right after me and my ex broke up. But we started talking as friends. And we were fr- we were very good friends for a long time. But then it was kind of this thing where it's like, we're FaceTiming each other and just kind of like staring at each other and like <laughs> nobody's addressing it. So like maybe, wow, maybe so there's you guys something took different. took the experience Wait, of being at a lesbian bar and put it on <laughs> FaceTime. Yes, exactly. Wait, exactly. so was your first moves towards each other in person or over the phone? It was over the internet. It was, she DM'd me on Instagram, which is weird. Cause I'm not like the kind of person that Wait, wants to Wait, that's how your friendship online. started. That's how, yeah, that's how the friendship. But how did okay. you take it yeah. from friendship to something more I think this is great because I think a lot of people are in love with their best friend currently based on just people DMing me (laughs) that they're in love with their best friend. So that is rough. How how did you what was that process like? So it was very slow and it was very like torture um, because we both got out of (laughs) very we both got out of long term relationships like basically at the same time. And so when we started talking to each other, we were just friends and we kind of bonded over that and but we both, you know, like wanted to address that we had some growing to do individually. And like, I needed to go to therapy for my past relationship. And like, she was dealing with stuff from her past relationship. And we were like, we don't want to get involved with each other. That's smart. Um, but then it kind of just started happening. Like you can't control the way you feel. It just started happening. And um, so we addressed it kind of when we couldn't ignore it anymore, which was a couple months ago, I think. Um, and just brought it up and we were like, we're not going to, pursue this but it's definitely there but we shouldn't be in a relationship right now because there's just too much that we need to like figure out as well this is very mature wanna... for like a 22 i don't think i would have had this level of restraint okay this is what i'm saying too though like this is way more mature <laughs> than anything i've ever fucking done 
You're like, let's make mistakes, bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like my little sister joined an ecology class so I could get closer to like this toxic straight girl. Like that's more me. Oh, she was straight and a bitch. Two strikes. She was straight, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, and then it kind of when I went to LA in December, we had phone sex before that. Whoops. And then uh, when I went I've to done LA the in whoops. December, I've done the whoops phone sex before sex. The, thing. the whoops. The whoops. thing. The thing with the phone sex though is that like I had less mercy on myself the next day because I was like, this is so much easier to avoid than like if we were in person and it's like hot and like we're all over each other. Blah blah. blah. It's like mm. I'm sitting there like this. <laughs> like I have time to think. Oh, you you sexted. You didn't like. Yeah, sorry. I should have clarified that. No, 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 no. <laughs> How um, dare you? Um, we're gonna have to correct the record there. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you were sexting. Okay. Okay. Would you yeah. consider that phone sex? Hmm. There were also audio messages involved. Oh, audio messages. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, consider yeah, yeah. phone sex. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like phone sex had a long legacy before my time. Yes. Me as well. Like it, it, like a phone sex operator was like a job you could have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I suppose that's still a thing. But you know, now the, I'm the thinking industry about has evolved. the first person that ever did phone sex. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was, Alexander Graham Bell or whatever yeah, is definitely. like, hello? <laughs> Are you hard Can right you hear now? Me? <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the first thing I wanted to do. I think I'd do like five minutes of like, this is awesome. We should fuck. <laughs> we should fuck right now. <laughs> oh man does any if we can get the listener writing right in who was the first person that had phone sex that's cool <laughs> i just i do I, th- I feel like to me the audio part of it will always be associated with phone sex yeah to me yeah and then sexting was something that came into being during my lifetime so i definitely see it as a different it's thing also interesting even though it's still on the phone i would say that sexting feels less intimate and heavy as phone sex like phone sex for is sure really intimate yeah. to me but oh, audio absolutely. messages also very intimate i would say so yeah what, yeah i'm so with you on that. you'd never been with this person sexually like when you start sexting someone that you've never like been with sexually you're kind of putting it all out there because you don't know what they yeah. like this i think harkens back even further to the romantic Telegram? fiery love letter love letter yeah like with the quill yeah like i want to okay rest yeah. my head in your bosoms and yeah, she yeah, might yeah. not even like bosom play <laughs> bosom. You know? right right exactly <laughs> and then you have to wait like 45 yeah. days <laughs> bosom play. being like i hope she's into bosom play <laughs> she was like i would prefer good sir that you bury thy face in mine ass <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if people, so like, were you scared? Like who sent the first sex? I guess it was like Um, probably flirty back and forth. It's, I am a big flirt. Like I, like to a bad extent, like not to like, not just like a little flirt. I flirt way too much. And especially if I like somebody. And so I think I was flirting with her quite a bit. And then kind of, it was just one of those nights. We've had a lot of nights where we just don't sleep and stay up all night talking. And somehow at like 3 a.m., it kind of snowballed into that and the flirty didn't stop. And then we started talking about what we like in bed. And then it kind of became this thing where I was like, I want to do this to you. And like, I want to do this to you, blah, blah, blah. And like that kind of thing. And it was really fucking hot, though. Like, (laughs) I didn't. That was the only time I've never done that before. And like, well, you are like four years old. (laughs) Right. And the other thing is that she's younger (laughs) than me, too. So like that was kind of weird. But. I feel like as we get older, that's not as big of a deal. But what's your age gap? Uh, four years. Okay, so yeah, it's like, like senior freshman. Yeah, senior freshman. That's, that's okay. I hate that. that. Happens. She calls me grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Yeah, no. I I actually hate it so much. <laughs> like it's fucked up. Wait till you're putting it's- icy hot on your arm so you can fuck a girl. <laughs> No, and when she visited me in December, she kept pointing out like m- like joints popping and stuff. I'm just like cracky, and yeah. uh, she like diagnosed me with TMJ. Which well, I didn't all know I lesbians had. have TMJ if they're doing a good job. <laughs> okay, that makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, draw issues, right? <laughs> no, but Chelsea does. 
<laughs> I have pretty bad jaw issues. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that was, uh, and so what do you think? Are you allowed to say like, what's going on? What's the future? Uh, That's a really great question. It's complicated because she's not really out yet. Mm-hmm. Um, So it's, it's very sticky right now, but she's definitely somebody that like, I'm willing to kind of wait for, I guess. She's, not like anyone I've ever met. She's so incredible. And- you're fucking gay, bro. This is like you're you're gonna U-Haul with this girl as soon as just, you get yeah. out of Springfield or whatever. I just like my my last relationship was. Are you moving to LA? I'm trying not to. I'm really trying not to. <laughs> but that's where YouTubers go. Exactly. That's what everyone expects. Oh, you're well. so fucked. <laughs> you're fucked. <laughs> there's a, I'm, there's a I'm lot absolutely of, fucked. It seems that right now there's a lot of balance between you being like, we're both in therapy and, and we have a lot of healing and finding ourselves to do. And also, I will wait for her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait forever. <laughs> I, I will wait as long as you need me to. It's, <laughs> it, yeah, it's bad. I was really looking forward to like having a hoe phase after me and my ex broke up. And then it was just like, as soon as that happened and we broke up, I was just like, oh, here's this yeah. incredible woman that's like everything that I want and more. And like, I definitely don't deserve, but. Stop saying that. Of course you deserve it. I can't stop. If you knew her, I'm telling you. It has you, nothing to do. Her. It has, a, you're a very exceptional no, I will say young person. I have never seen a relationship last that began with one of the people saying, I don't deserve her. What the fuck, Kate? Whoa, bro. <laughs> Because if you, if you, like, it's one thing to <laughs> say that. an atomic bomb on this All poor, right, like, I'll adolescent you guys later, uh, <laughs> queer. She's like, I'm so fucking in love. Uh. No, I just think, I think, I think it's, um, <laughs> it's not that crazy a thing. You said it yourself that you're doing healing and you're doing growing. And if you're at a point where you're like, I don't deserve her, that's not a healthy starting place. Well, I don't. I actually think it's more for Mac to do internally. Yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with this girl. That's what I'm saying. I what? think Mac does deserve her. I think Mac just <laughs> yes, has self esteem issues. Thank I, that's you. What I, wait, I'm agreeing. Okay, I'm not saying you're right about not deserving her. I'm saying when you're in the headspace of like, I don't deserve this person. This person's too good for me. I've never seen a relationship survive that dynamic. Interesting. That's fair. Okay, well, <laughs> Mac, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm but so sorry. Now you do it's have not going to work. <laughs> you have to break up with your girlfriend. No, right? no. Let me just it was that, that's what Kate me. said. No. So <laughs> this has gone way off the rails so and out of context. I'm so glad that Kate is having this moment after the, the, you actively get with fans, right? I love that we're <laughs> passing some of the fucking. I didn't say it. <laughs> I know you didn't, but I still, there was a lot of heat on me and I'd love to transfer it over to someone else. No, I've just never seen. I I do. Mac, I now personally... we have to fucking neg Kate. <laughs> yeah, we have seriously. To Kate. Tell us your I'm story. I'm not negging. I think that you're great. I think you probably do deserve this girl. I think it's wonderful that you're both thinking about your own growth. It is in the zeitgeist right now that's saying. Oh, is I don't. It? Did you see an Instagram swipe through before you got here? No. <laughs> I've and I've experienced this too. When someone's when, when someone's saying I don't deserve this person, I don't deserve this person, and I've caught myself saying it in my current relationship at my lower points. So this isn't mm. just like mm. in theory. Like I've like it. A relationship suffers when one person thinks that they don't deserve that the is other true. person. That's true. And I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that you have to love yourself before you can love someone else. I think everyone is deserving of love. And I have been in a place where I have hated myself and been able to accept pa, pa, love from. Pa, pa, what are you pa, pa, doing? Pa, pa. You're just. This is a perfect speech. No, keep going. <laughs> I've been in a place where I've hated myself and still been able to accept love from other people. <laughs> no, keep going. However, I think that the dynamic of. <laughs> Of one person thinking they don't deserve the other is at its root concerning. <laughs> and it's not that they're right. Not uh, not usually. <laughs> I'm so mad that you're just now bringing in the soundboard like this. Like, where was that when I was talking about phone sex? You couldn't have done that. There we go. That's go exactly. And it no, was really fucking actually, hot. 
<laughs> <laughs> I um I, I I agree with you, Kate. I actually one hundred percent agree with that you. That makes sense. <laughs> I think the delivery. I think the delivery. I think the delivery to Matt could have been a little softer. It totally. It was a little harsh. It was a little harsh. I understand where uh, it could be fully misinterpreted. (laughs) Yeah, bitch, you don't deserve her. (laughs) That's not. And here's why I'm gonna be hooking up with fans. So, (laughs) listener, no, I am not gonna do that. And if I did, it would be a really thoughtful exception to. A rule that I put a lot of thought into, and I don't consider you a fan. I consider you a supporter. Just FYI. <laughs> oh. Hey, have you guys ever taken? Have you guys ever taken the um, the like? How do I say this without you guys laughing at me? We love. Have you, you guys ever taken the BDSM test online? Yes. No. That tells you like you have. I did. Yeah. Okay, I literally just took it the other day, and the results were like alarming they like it wasn't what i it wasn't what, it just wasn't what i expected what did it you brought get? The, <laughs> it you brought you don't the, have to say what it said if you don't you, you, to. we have to have mac back i yeah, i was do. like i don't know what this is gonna be like i don't know this person just a random listener suggestion i'm fully shitting on mac right now i was like i'm not sure but she's phenomenal yeah yeah you're great oh thank you guys <laughs> I got on my Instagram DMs the other day, which I don't, I don't really go through my DMs very much. And I got a bunch of DMs that were like, you need to be on the, we're having gay sex podcast. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? And this was right after you had messaged me. And I was like, oh, maybe that's why this happened. And that's definitely why this (laughs) happened. I got some DMs too. Um, But what did, what were your results on the BDSM test? You don't need to read them. No, read them. I, well, me and my, uh, me and my situation ship took it together, like for fun. Oh, it's listen, it's just it's just that it brought the it brought the um bottom comments on my TikTok to life and I didn't like that. Oh, interesting. And I don't know how. You were taking it individually and then sharing results or you were actually taking it together? No, we took it individually and then shared results. <laughs> I don't which know. you guys how should take happens. it. I want to know your results. We should take it. That'd be fun bonus content. That would be really fun. <laughs> I don't want people to know. I don't want you don't want people to know I I have nothing left I have nothing the only thing people Open don't book. know is the shape of my asshole at this point round <laughs> there we go we're done Fuck, how did you know <laughs> shit did I show you my asshole <laughs> when did I show you my asshole <laughs> that's bonus content fuck did we do that on the road <laughs> It was uh, it was back in the days when you were on Periscope. Ah, <laughs> that makes sense. I don't want to talk about that. That's embarrassing. Um, Mac, truly though, from both of us, we think you're fantastic. Thank you. You do deserve a wonderful relationship. Yes, that's Thank what I was guys. trying to say. No, you did. You you're did. very sweet. <laughs> I think it's like it comes from less of a place of like, oh, I don't like myself, and more of a place of just like what the fuck a woman like this exists mm. and like i know her it's like more of that kind of thing but i get what you're, you're saying I'll, I'll bring it up with my therapist <laughs> <laughs> or this podcast <laughs> right this could work too this is a lot cheaper <laughs> kate sisk cyber bullies mac live on whs podcast <laughs> that's the result of your bdsm test <laughs> Okay, we gotta go to Kate. Okay, Kate. Oh, thank you, Mac. That was wonderful. Absolutely. Kate, did you have gay sex this week? Oh boy, no. My asshole's been bleeding. We're not gonna linger on that. But <laughs> my joints are falling apart. Kate's asshole is bleeding. Please write in if you would like to take over this show because we don't have much time left. It's really, it's it's really mostly only. But so. Uh, what I can't figure out is if I'm bleeding internally or if there's like a cut on my ass, right? Like a hemorrhoid or yeah. an anal fissure. And so, and it only happens when I go to the <laughs> Poor Mac. Poor Mac. You have nine, are you dead, okay? nine you years dead. until you, until you are in this position. Alex, you, are, are, you also. You got seven years up. left, baby. Okay. So I just like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I think no, so. We're I'm going to the doctor okay. literally right after this. Uh, but so I was tempted it's oh. only when I go to the bathroom, so I cannot tell if it is 
caused by that process or if I am like <laughs> evacuating blood. So I was oh. like, hmm, what's evacuating a way? Evacuating blood is another punk band that I really <laughs> love. I was like, what's a way for me to figure this out? <laughs> and I got very close to being like, I'm going to put a dildo in my ass. <laughs> See if it bleeds. <laughs> and why didn't you? <laughs> okay, I'm giving myself just an A plus for soundboard usage today. I am fucking killing it on the soundboard. I knew you were coming in hot with the good joke there about your butthole. So oh anyway, I considered it. So I almost had gay ass sex with myself. Uh, you know why? Why? Why have anal sex with someone else when you can right. masturbate? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> tell your sister. I will. I will let her know about that. I don't know if she's gotten to ass play yet, but we'll see. So this this story doesn't really have a beginning, middle, end. But so my uh, my I had really good sex last week, as we discussed, some of the best sex of my life, and then my asshole immediately started bur- <laughs> bleeding. <laughs> Unrelated. I'm I'm convinced unrelated, but karmically th- it feels therapist. awful. Uh, and so I did not sh- shove a dildo in my butt to find out. So I was taking like a like a nice shower to re- relax, and I was having some shower thoughts that, and it made me think that that was what I wanted to talk about. Today. Okay. So I was thinking about improv. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. Well, do I want to talk about this right now? Maybe. I love the fucking genders of the week that people send in or like the lookalikes or whatever. I absolutely love it. One that I've gotten a lot and, <laughs> and like no judgment or shade if you've sent this in. But a lot of, I've realized this, I think it's mostly white people um, send me pictures of like <laughs> dark skinned, like muscle latinos and are like this is what i thought you looked like until i watched the pod <laughs> you what? have said so many times and that you're I a white puerto every rican every single episode I, every episode I, well, every episode i say that i'm white there are a few episodes where i talk about also being puerto rican <laughs> and you ne- in, invariably you mentioned that you were a white puerto rican i feel like <laughs> it was like very funny to you me you more than it- i don't think Look, I am not Puerto Rican, but I feel like you say it like so much. I just it's really important to me that, um, you know, I think I think it's it's you know, I talk to my mom. about. You don't want to get canceled. No, no. It's I'm, jo- I'm joking. That <laughs> joke just totally bombed. It's, I mean, th- there's let's see. My mom and I talk about this a lot. We speak about the ways in which you want to like feel it's not wrong to align with your culture and also just because you're like claiming your culture doesn't mean you're claiming that you're not white and my mom and I are in different situations when it comes to that but like I know that I'm white yeah like I I just definitely am I've met your mom your mom is more visibly not white (laughs) yeah she's she's half Puerto Rican you wouldn't really know white passing she gets different things from different people and different things at different stages in life I think if she was born in d- different time periods her experience would be different yeah, um yeah. like a, she has a lot of really really interesting things to say about race and ethnicity and i'm and i really proud of the things that she does in her community in regards to that but <laughs> but so personally i just think every time that i want to like claim that i'm puerto rican because i'm really proud of that fact i'm really close with my my relationship with my grandfather is really important he's from puerto rico and that's why being Puerto Rican is so important to me because I, our our souls are so connected. This um, is really gay sex. <laughs> this is just, so gay. This is like the gayest shit I've ever heard in my entire I, life. <laughs> you gonna start talking about soccer, you little bitch? You gonna start no, talking but, about soccer? But and I crying? just, I just, when I'm when I'm when I'm claiming my I, identity as a Puerto Rican, I understand. I want people to know that I know that I'm white, and I also want people to know that I know that I grew up in like a white community. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm always putting it out there. So it was like very starkly funny to me that people were like, this is what I thought you looked like. And I was like, I went out of my way, dude. And you really did. (laughs) Anyway, that was a very long-winded way. It probably doesn't help that I've been tagging those Puerto Rican (laughs) bodybuilders (laughs) with your name in my story. Well, it's very flattering too. A lot of handsome men. But anyway, I was I was just thinking about Spanish and what Spanish has meant to me. I did not grow up speaking at home, but my mom put me in class early because she it, it was important to her that I learn 
she also did not grow up speaking at home she learned in school yeah because when my grandfather was starting his family life with my grandmother who did understand spanish um it was like of the time not to right speak spanish at home. right anyway assimilationist moment in, in u.s history <laughs> anyway spanish is very important to me and i was thinking of the first time that i used spanish in comedy and it was in an improv scene <laughs> where it, it was this like kind of plot heavy like improv moment where there was somebody was playing this guy javier from spain oh and, like yeah. everyone all the girls were lusting over javier yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. that kind of like shakespearean thing where like there's like a love quadrangle over yeah, javier the, the uh, broad squad, broad yeah. squad. <laughs> yeah so then i come on and i'm like <laughs> like i'm like hola me llamo Francisco and I'm here with my boyfriend Javier and, and it, like I don't think I've ever got a laugh so big like <laughs> and it felt and it felt good to that use is like beautiful Spanish and queerness in yes. like one line and it was before I was out too so I, it was just like this really yeah and it's just like oh, I've spent so many minutes on stage and I've done so many things and like <laughs> I've I've had amazing moments. I've made bad mistakes. Like I just, I, I've had bombs. I've had there's slays. something about an improv. Sorry, Mac. This is so not unless you're an improviser. <laughs> this is so interesting. Comedian. No, I'm loving this. Well, I'm the thing is, it. like, I, I am nowhere near at the level of improv improviser that you are. But I did do some improv, yeah, and yeah. I remember my two or three biggest pops that I got yeah. in improv, and they are way cooler than my <laughs> yeah, yeah. best absolute they just, best stand-up joke it's it, they just crazy. it just really stuck with me and so in the shower today i was like thinking about that moment and i was thinking about spanish and comedy and queerness and i and i was like huh i wonder why my brain in that moment went to like francisco as the name and then i was like well i was going by cisco at the time as my nickname for soccer so it was like the closest thing and then i was like oh my god what if i transitioned and i called myself cisco sisk and cisco is like short for francisco wouldn't that be crazy? Is it crazy? <laughs> and then I was like, I think it's crazy? hot. And then I was like, actually, that's like, that's like the perfect, that's the perfect like embodiment of all the stuff that I've been saying because like everyone thinks I'm like this like Cisco guy, but really I'm just some white bitch named Fran. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Mac, we just did this Patreon episode where it was, I'm not just plugging in Patreon here. It was a beautiful episode and it was basically about, it was just Kate's episode uh, and it was just, I, I steamrolled. No, but it was beautiful. And we talked about your pronouns and I, I said on there, I'm really going to try and mostly call you he, him from now on against your will. No, not against Kate's will. Because of something that you said in that episode. Yeah. And um, if you want me to call you Cisco, I will call you Cisco. <laughs> or I'll call you Fran. <laughs> nope, you don't Fran like is, that. Well, it's funny. It's very funny to me. But so then the it's it's kind of this nice, I don't know. It just, it stuck with me as like, oh, it's like queer, like Spanish-based comedy moment that I remember. It's like a Spanish name, which is like my mom's side of the family. Yeah. And then Cisco comes from my last name, which I think I've mentioned before. My dad and my grandfather went by as a nickname. So it's like the oh. my dad's side of the family, too. So, like, yeah. I know it would be an insane name. Like, Cisco Sisk is really stupid. No, I, I think it's a great. <laughs> are you kidding me for the sh this so clear cool. shock jock radio? <laughs> Cisco, 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 everybody. <laughs> we got our pussy Febreze and we're ready to use it. <laughs> oh, I love that gay sex. That was wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Anything you want to plug, Mac? What's that? <laughs> I don't know why that was such a funny why response. Was that, why was that so funny? I don't know why. <laughs> Listen. Cisco needs to go get his asshole checked. <laughs> right, right, right. Do you have anything that you are working on that you want the people to know about? You got your pod coming out soon, uh, so go yeah. follow. Podcast coming out soon. Just posting regular content on YouTube and TikTok. Other than that, not much else. I'm a college student, so I'm kind of doing all of that at once, and it's a nightmare, but it's okay. <laughs> You'll, you got this. You got it. You'll be you done got soon. It. You're great. Thanks, guys. Um, well, please come back. We would love to have you back. I yeah. would love to come back. I love the way you guys like bounce from being funny to being like so serious and 
teaching me all the life lessons. <laughs> I actually love it. That's like my favorite thing in um, also, like meeting new people. I also swear yeah. I didn't mean. <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> Do we have you like deserve, beef? You yep. deserve There's everything, beef. Mac. There's you beef. deserve everything. Is there beef? Cisco and Mac have no, beef. No, no, it's no. It's 1998, <laughs> and Cisco and Mac have beef. <laughs> you deserve everything. Know that. Nope, that's not what Cisco said earlier. <laughs> that's Cisco was like, "I'm gonna write a song about thongs." Also, I hate Mac. <laughs> You can't say that without the music in the background. You're going to have to use the sound. <laughs> you want to go, Cisco? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't see it, listener, Mac was just doing a Mortal Kombat kind of <laughs> fisticuffs. <laughs> the Fighting Irish uh, logo. <laughs> Orlando, Miami, Tampa, West Palm Beach, Phoenix. I'm coming very soon. And then some dates across the South and California coming up. After that, and Denver as well. AshleyGavin.com. Oh, and, and Bloomington. There's just so many. Just go, guys, c- can you get on the text list? I'm so tired. All right. My gay thought this week, I posted a picture of my very best friend in the world, Sam Morrison, performing stand-up comedy. And someone responded to it and said that the girl in the background of the photo was someone that she had been hooking up with. And this person is from another country and had been visiting the city and the, the person who DM me is from another country. And I was just thinking in that moment, I know we get mad when people have a friend. They're like, oh, my friend's gay. Maybe you know her. You know, we get mad about that. But isn't it like kind of accurate? Like there's six degrees of separation, right? I feel like in the gay community, it's probably three. We need to come up with a mathematical heuristic to determine How many degrees of separation are within the lesbian, queer, whatever community? And I would like to, I would like to volunteer my name. Three degrees of Ashley Gavin. I'm an arrogant fuck. At least I know it. All right, listeners. I I hope you have a great week.